as a scholar of genocide, I have to say that many people use this word in a in a in a way that is not not right. However, this is a textbook case. If you look at the, the definition, it has a legal definition. Genocide has a legal definition. It's not a dictionary definition. It has many conditions. And most of them are being carried out by Israel. So I, I feel confident to say it's a textbook case of genocide. I don't think we have seen this in the last century. Yes, there have been some terrible wars. But we have to keep in mind that this is not really a war. It is a genocide against a people. States declare wars on other states. But this is a war on people. And so this destruction is beyond what we see. It is destroying everything, everything, including culture, including universities, hospitals, schools, 70% of the housing in Gaza. How can we stand by and watch this? This is trauma. It's, it's terrible trauma. 1.1 million pe children, just children, are targeted for genocide right now. Starvation is being used as a weapon of war. This is one of the aspects of genocide. This is only one aspect. So on even just one count, you, could, you would say Israel is committing a textbook case of genocide. Even that one count. People are out in the streets over this terrible atrocity. They have to keep doing that. They can also boycott, divest, and sanction Israel. It has to happen. Yes, in North America, there are some, particularly the United States, there are measures to make boycott BDS, boycott, divestment, divestment and sanction, um, unlawful. This, this, this conflict, this genocide, has its roots 100 years ago. So October 7th was an excuse for Israel to begin a genocide, a real, true, forceful genocide. It can't be ignored forever. We don't have forever. There won't be a Gaza if we don't act now.